Yo, what's good YouTube, man? It's Gary with the Fan TV, man. Back at you another video of the content of this video. Go and smash that like button at the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, so today I will talk about two things. Um, quickly talk about the injury report and then also talk about, you know, Lamar Jackson's case for MVP because after the Ravens, you know, beat the 49ers, that's something that's been pretty much the news topic of the week regarding the Ravens, right? Um, so let's get right to the injury report, okay? So... Raiders injury report uh, does have a lot of names on it, so we're just going to go through it really quickly. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis, Zay Flowers, DMP, Delshawn Phillips, DMP, Brandon Stevens, DMP, okay? Um, <clears throat> for guys that were limited, uh, Kyle Hamilton, Arthur Merlette, Patrick McCurry, uh, Jordan Stout, Kevin Zeitler, okay? Guys that were full participants, Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith, and Broderick Washington. So, long, long list of injuries right now. Um, you know, guys that we're going to be looking out for, obviously, is, you know, Zay Flowers. Um, Brandon Stevens didn't have anything yesterday. Popped up on it today as a DMP, so we got to look out for that. But, you know, it's this time of the year where a lot of injuries are happening. Uh, guys are feeling it for playing, you know. Uh, we're, what, week 17, so they're going to play 16 football games. So, you know, guys are feeling it. That's how it is at the end of the year. So, um you know, when the game status and that kind of stuff happens, we'll know more. But for right now, no, I'm not going to be worried about it. Um, Zay Flowers and Kyle Hamilton didn't practice a whole bunch last week. Um, and then they played, you know what I'm saying? So, well, I think Zay Flowers was like full participant by the end of the week. But, you know, we'll see what happens as we get later on into the week. All right, you know, leave it at that. All right, so <clears throat> that's your injury report. So, uh, the Lamar Jackson MVP case, right? That's kind of been the news topic between, um, you know, all the sports talk shows, whether it's, uh, Manuel Acho and James Jones and Sean McCoy or it's Keyshawn Johnson, Skip Bayless, Richard, uh, Richard Sherman, um, you know, Shannon Sharp and the first take guys. Whoever you want to talk about, that's been the topic of discussion, right? The Lamar Jackson MVP case, okay? So, now, I'm going to start off with this right now. Lamar Jackson doesn't care if he wins MVP. I don't care if he wins MVP personally, right? Uh, when I grew up, you could give the award to running back. So, you know, when I grew up, there was Marshall Fark winning it. There was uh, Sean Alexander winning MVP. There was Adrian Peterson winning MVP, right? So I'm okay giving it to other positions, right? You know, that's, me, that's just me personally. Over the years, it's changed. So for me, this year, if I had to pick, I'm going between Christian McCaffrey and Tyreek Hill just because um, the quarterback play is a little bit down this year in terms of who's that standout MVP candidate, right? So just be fully upfront with that's how That's just how I feel, okay? Uh, but... If the core, if the MVP is going to be a quarterback award because the quarterback is the most valuable player on said football team, then a the, lot of the excuses and reasons that I'm hearing from that while Lamar Jackson can't get it is very, very silly to me. It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So um, there was a guy, I think his name is like Kevin Cole on Twitter, right? Something like that. He He's a, one of these big analytics guys, right? He uses EPA and stuff like that to determine who he thinks are the best players in the league, right? And guess who's at the top of the list in terms of EPA? Brock Purdy, right? Because this 49ers offense is so efficient that, you know, he is a analytical person's dream, right? The way the 49ers person, the way the 49ers run their offense, okay? But honestly, the 49ers, regardless of who the quarterback is, is going to be a top 10 offense in terms of all the metrics that you have. It happened last year. Um, 49ers quarterback X, whatever, it didn't matter. They were a top 10 offense. It, it didn't matter, right? Now, Brock Purdy has elevated the offense in terms of he is one of the best uh, guys that have been in the Shanahan system probably since Matt Ryan won the MVP previously, right? But that, does, that doesn't mean that he's the MVP, right? So after Lamar Jackson, the Ravens go in there, San Francisco win the game. The tie shifted to Lamar Jackson being MVP, right? And a lot of these advanced metrics people don't see that, right? They say that he doesn't have the uh, the EPA numbers, the rushing efficiency is down, this and that. But listen, sometimes you have to go beyond the the advanced stats, right? Lamar Jackson this year especially is a true watch the game kind of player, right? So Lamar Jackson this year, right, is operating the pocket better than he's ever done. He's he's leading in a pass the game more efficiently than he's ever done, honestly, right? Now, the numbers might be different, but he's already set a career high in passing yards this year, right? With two more games left to go, Lamar Jackson has a chance to, you know, hit a, a crazy milestone, which can be like 3,800 yards passing and like 900 yards rushing, right? He has, I think, 700 yards, 700 plus yards on the season, 
um, in terms of on the ground. All he has 33 yards, 3,300 yards through the air. So we're talking about unprecedented territory in terms of uh, almost passing for 4,000 yards and almost running for 1,000, right? Unprecedented territory that Lamar Jackson is approaching, right? That's one thing. And when it comes to the MVP, it has always been about QB wins, right? Now, or team wins, you know, it usually goes to, you know, best player, best team. That's just how it goes. So it's not that, that there is a new set of precedent for Lamar Jackson. No, it's not. It just, this year, the quarterback play in terms of who is the most outstanding quarterback in the league, it really hasn't been there, right? So um, that's why the the purely using advanced stats, you can't make that case with Lamar Jackson because you have to watch the games and see how he impacts defenses, right? The reason that the Ravens are able to run the ball so well is not just because Lamar Jackson can run the ball himself. It's, it's because the defense has to account for what Lamar Jackson might do, right? That that allows Gus Edwards to run the ball well, Keaton Mitchell when he was healthy, Justice Hill, because the, the defenders have to look at Lamar Jackson every single snap, right, Depending, to, to see what he's going to do, right? Then there's the Richard Sherman argument about the touchdown score this year for Lamar Jackson would be a historically low number for a guy who won the MVP, right? So I'm not disputing that argument, okay? Right now, Lamar Jackson is sitting at about, uh, I believe it's 24 touchdowns total, 19 passing, uh, 5 rushing. But the, the, the thing is with that argument is that there's already been MVPs in the past that have won the award with um, touchdown numbers that are comparable to what Lamar Jackson is doing right now. Hold on, I, I, I had a tweet about it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But basically, there was uh, multiple years. Okay, here it is, right? So Peyton Manning in 2004, right, had 28 touchdowns total, 12 interceptions. Steve McNair, 2003, 28 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Uh, Rich Gannon, 02, 29 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Right now, Lamar Jackson has 24 touchdowns total, seven interceptions. Now, yes, are we going back 20 plus years? Of course, right, it is. It's a very different case. But you have to account for the fact also that if you watch the Ravens play, when the Ravens get down into the goal line, who they give the ball to? They give it to Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards has 12 rushing touchdowns this year. Gus Edwards' longest rushing touchdown this year is seven yards, okay? So he's getting the ball from the five yard end and finishing the drive off, right? But who's the guy getting him down there? Lamar Jackson. So that, you have to account for that. So that argument of he doesn't have the touchdown numbers, when he was MVP in 2019, he had 36. Listen, he had a historic season in 2019, right? Like that was one of the most efficient kind of things you had. You know, 36 touchdowns, um, six interceptions, another seven on the ground. Comparing that to this season, you, every season is different, right? Every season is completely different. So for me, the touchdown thing doesn't hold weight, right? And then, you know, Richard Sherman, right? He tries to go to, well, then if that's the case, Josh Allen should win MVP. So wait, Brock Purdy was the guy, right? Lamar Jackson outshines Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy has, a, has his worst performance of the season by far. The odds shift to Lamar Jackson, right? You get off of the Brock Purdy train. Now you throw it to Josh Allen. Josh Allen is not even leading in his division right now. So you want to make a case for the guy to be the MVP for who's not even going to win his division as it currently stands. Now the Dolphins have to, I think, win a game or two for that deliberate lock up the AFC East. But as it stands right now, he's not even winning his division. Okay. Um, he used the argument about, well, you know, Josh Allen has 40 touchdowns this year. Josh Allen has 13 rushing touchdowns because the Bills use Josh Allen how the Panthers used to use Cam Newton at the goal line, right? He's a big physical quarterback, and also he's their best goal line rusher, right? They have guys like Tavius Berry, James Cook, and they went and got Leonard Fournette because they don't trust what they have down in the goal line, so they use Josh Allen, right? If Lamar Jackson ran the ball from five yards in the end, he would have more touchdowns, but they, that's not how that's not how the Ravens have decided to use them. So using that argument against him doesn't really make much sense. This year is extremely unique when it comes to winning who's going to win MVP. Like I said when I started, right? If you want to give the MVP to Tyreek Hill, Christian McCaffrey, I am completely fine and okay with that, right? But you well, the issue I have is you can't discredit what Lamar Jackson has done and what he is accomplishing along the way. Right. Lamar Jackson is playing as one of the top three quarterbacks in the NFL. Right. 
when you look at their advanced metrics, right, that the guy uh, Kevin Cole was using, right, Lamar Jackson was like 11th in EPA, right? He was behind guys like Jordan Love, uh, Baker Mayfield, and Jared Goff, right? Now, these are three guys that are having three good seasons, right? So I'm not taking that nothing away from them. But at the end of the day, if that's what the advanced metrics are telling you, then you need to add some more context because obviously those guys are not having better seasons than Lamar Jackson in terms of impact and winning, right? The MVP has always been about the guy who wins, right? If it was just about the guy who put up the most numbers, we would have different MVPs throughout our history. But it generally goes to people who win it, who win as well. So um, I think that for whatever reason, I don't know why Lamar Jackson winning MVP potentially has um, triggered these kind of responses. I, I don't know. Uh, but if they're going to give it to a quarterback, Lamar Jackson is as deserving as any quarterback this season to win the MVP. And that's my thoughts on it, man. So, uh, but I'm going to get out of here, man. It's Gary Rupert, another fan TV. Mau.